Years after Kids for Cash, there is a new crisis unfolding within the juvenile justice system. A lack of detention beds and nowhere to hold the county's most violent young offenders. It's a problem that impacts our area and the entire state, and authorities say it stems from the scandal that shocked Luzerne County nearly 15 years ago. Now, more than a decade later, Kids for Cash continues to impact our communities and our schools. Action 16 Investigates reporter Melissa Steininger has been working to expose this new crisis, and she joins us now. Melissa. Yes, yeah, Scott, Lisa, school districts across Luzerne County say they're seeing a huge problem with fights and violence against students and teachers in the hallways. Not only that, they tell us that some students are committing violent crimes crimes outside of those school hours and because there's nowhere to put these young offenders, many of them are right back in class the next day. Public school officials say the situation only adds to staffing shortages and leads to safety concerns in the classroom. It's also prompting more parents to send kids to private schools. Friday night lights, a tradition throughout Pennsylvania. One that's been celebrated for generations at schools throughout Luzerne County. But now that tradition is being tested. It was this chaos caught on camera outside the Wyoming Valley West Stadium back in 2021 that led Kingston Police Chief Richard Kochik to suggest a change. The problems that we started having, the violence that we started having, I said, you know, we're done. Uh, what, cops were assaulted. You know, there was numerous acts of violence that changed the way we do that. While the Friday night lights are staying on at Wyoming Valley West School District, football fans must now pass through metal detectors as they file into the stadium in Kingston. 10, 12 cops. Um, you can't come to a game without your parents. Similar violence has infiltrated the hallways and cafeterias of schools throughout Luzerne County. Chief Kochuk says there were 144 arrests at the Wyoming Valley West Middle School in the 2021-2022 school year. That's nearly one arrest each school day. And the problem isn't just on Luzerne County's west side. According to Pennsylvania's 2022-2023 school safety report, the Greater Nanticoke Area School District has one of the highest numbers of violent incidents per student in the county. You know, we're talking about weapons. We're talking about um, assault. We're talking about those types of crimes that are really problematic and schools are not equipped to deal with that. That violence has trickled into the city of Nanticoke as well. It's permeated this town over the course of the last five, six years. That uptick in issues all stems from the lack of juvenile detention beds across northeastern Pennsylvania. Right now, there's not a single bed in Luzerne County to hold the most violent youth offenders. Let's say a teacher was hit, that kid could be there the next day at school. Superintendent Ronald Gravira has worked as an educator for 28 years, and he spent the past decade at GNA. When I first started here 10 years ago, we didn't have cameras, we didn't have security, we didn't have um, metal detectors. Now, that's a part of the principal's daily routine. And it changes the way classrooms now look as well. For the first time in 28 years, we have teacher shortages. People don't want to go into education any longer because they don't want to deal with the behaviors of certain kids and the way that they're acting in classrooms. The Pennsylvania Department of Education reports there are currently about 5,500 teacher vacancies across the state. Ten years ago, Pennsylvania certified nearly 20,000 new teachers every year. Last year, we certified only 5,000. Ethan Hulick is one of those teachers who left his dream behind. He taught at Hanover Area Junior Senior High School until June of 2022. At that point, I have to think like, do I want to do this for another 27 years? <laughs> at what cost? Hulick isn't the only one who left Hanover Area during that time. According to Superintendent Nathan Barrett, he lost 10% of his district faculty that very same year. We have folks that don't maximize their benefit, their, their retirement benefit, because they want out. Hulick first walked the halls of Hanover Area as a student graduating back in 2013. 
But those same hallways looked much different when he returned to his alma mater just six years later. So the one kid picks up the kid, body slams him. I run over and just scoop him up. And I go, stop, stop. And then he goes, he's touching me, he's touching me. So I dropped him and I said, beat each other up. And I walked away. Bullock started teaching eighth grade English in February of 2020, just weeks before the COVID-19 pandemic closed our schools. But when they reopened. Disciplines got taken away that should have been there and should have always been there for our protection as teachers. I don't have my teachers teaching to the best of their ability because they're trying to figure out, are they okay, are they safe? Bullock says he saw violence in his classroom and the hallways were even worse. The kid punched over her in one hit, knocked the kid and he went back, cracked his head off of the tile. Blood started gushing out and he started to seize. Here's a staff who gives me everything they have in the course of a day and I had to be the one to deflate them that I have no remedy for what they just had experienced. That's when Hanover area began to create changes. A police officer in every building and a no tolerance cell phone policy. We found that there was a, a, a tremendous appeal to record violence and post it all over social media sites. We have seen a drastic decline in violence because there wasn't the reward that was there before. Hanover area, alongside Wilkes-Barre area, Wyoming Valley West, and the greater Nanticoke area all top the list of violent incidents per student in Luzerne County, according to that school safety report. It's violence like this that has led to a zero tolerance fighting policy at Wilkes-Barre area high school in Plains Township. If you are not there for an education, if you are there to get in fights and cause trouble, um, we'll provide you an education, but it won't be in that building. Patrick Peters is the principal of the newly established Cyber Academy at Wilkes-Barre area. It's the first of its kind in the state as administrators are trying to combat this growing problem. And again, I think a lot of it has to do when you have shows like On Patrol Live, where you see these kids that um, are in your classroom or in the community and all of a sudden that are involved in crimes. The Cyber Academy is a court mandated program through the Luzerne County Juvenile and Family Court. This program comes as judges like Jennifer Rogers say their hands are tied. My options are deficient and or non-existent. It certainly impedes my ability to do my best job. But this program is just a band-aid as the county continues to struggle to address the problem at hand. Again, it's just another thing that's being put on us that we as a district uh, have to try and fix on our own. These issues within the county's public schools has led to a spike in enrollment in private schools across the county. Holy Redeemer in Wilkes-Barre is seeing an increase in public school transfers and Good Shepherd Academy in Kingston reports that it took in more than double the amount of new students it was expecting. Meanwhile, public school districts continue to put in place measures they hope will reduce violence, even when it comes at a cost. All the residents of the surrounding area are footing the bill for because of unhealthy circumstances that are within the walls of this building. As districts continue to put in place any measures they can to figure out how to combat this crisis. Kingston Police now has a school resource officer in the middle school and arrests have been cut in half. Now I think this year I'm starting to see that difference at the middle school. High school not so much but the middle school we are now starting to see uh, the change. A change of tradition, all for the safety of our students. So we will do our job to the fullest and we, we will do what we have to do to, to make sure that the schools are a safe place. While we're focusing on this issue in Luzerne County, this lack of detention beds is at a crisis level across 13 counties here in northeastern Pennsylvania, as well as a problem for the majority of the state as a whole. Now, tomorrow you'll hear from some of the young people caught up in the original Kids for Cash scandal, how that continues to affect their lives to this very day, and how the state is trying to deal with this new crisis in our juvenile justice system. All right.